Today, we're answering some questions about an amino acid called arginine. What does it do? So let's break it down. Hey, it's Dr. A, and on this channel, we break down healthcare, medical questions, etc. The first thing to think about is arginine is an amino acid, which amino acids normally are used to help make the structure of the tissues in the body. They can be used as the backbone of enzymes and other systems used in the body. They can be turned into things such as uh, neurotransmitters and other things such as that. And so they are either directly, meaning they're part of a structure or part of an enzyme or indirectly being that they trigger something to happen, part of many, many processes. So arginine is an amino acid that happens to, among many things that it does, help your body make nitric oxide. So the first thing to kind of just get out of the way, because it's a common question is, is nitric oxide the same as nitrous oxide? Maybe you are given nitrous oxide as a gas for dental work or surgery or something like that. Well, they're very close, but they are two different molecules, one of them being nitrous nitrous oxide is normally in a gas state. It's used as an anesthetic, central anesthetic, and it has a little different chemistry than the nitric oxide that we're going to talk about here. So nitric oxide is often in a non-gas state, and it is something that the body uses to help with a number of processes inside of the body. So the first thing is, how are they related? How is arginine related to nitric oxide? Well, the way that we make nitric oxide in the body is by taking arginine, the amino acid, having it encounter an enzyme called NOS or nitric oxide synthase. And the NOS enzyme takes a piece of the arginine, cleaves it off, and that is the nitric oxide molecule and then the residue, what's left of the arginine, becomes an amino called citrulline. So the first thing is that arginine can help to increase the nitric oxide in the body. And also, interestingly, if you give somebody citrulline as a supplemental amino acid, it will conserve the arginine cycle and actually raise nitric oxide as well. So they both get in the act, but arginine is the donor of the nitric oxide molecule. So that's how they're connected together. Now, in big picture terms, nitric oxide is used in a couple of really big areas in the body. One is it's a vasoactive substance, and vasoactive substances are there to do something to your blood vessels. In the case of nitric oxide, it helps the blood vessel to relax and can do things such as improve blood flow and lower blood pressure, things like that. It's also a neuroactive substance. Substance, and so it works in the neurological system, and it can do things such as calming the central nervous system through secondary means, and also it works, nitric oxide works a lot in your eye for photoreception activities. So it has these two big vasoactive and neuroactive processes that nitric oxide gets involved in. And one of the questions that we got, which is a really good one, is I heard it's dangerous if you raise your nitric oxide levels too much. And the point of that comment is, like all things in the body where there is a production and elimination of something, and where that something is active in the brain or the vascular system, etc., there's a balance that the body is supposed to achieve with it. Now, if we have a low balance, so there's not as much supply and the nitric oxide levels are lower than they're supposed to be, then we can have too much vascular activity that is excitatory. So it might get high blood pressure, for example. We may have excitation in the brain because we lose the nitric oxide calming effect. So there's a lot of things along those lines that happen when we're out of balance. The other side is if we make too much and it doesn't have any anywhere to go, it has the potential to be oxidative and to maybe create some oxidative damage in the body, which is where the concerns about too much being bad for you come from. The best way to look at this is if all you are doing is feeding the system and helping 
to supply arginine and cofactors so that you can make more nitric oxide, but the body gets to decide whether it's going to use that arginine or not, you're not going to create any excess state where there might be a danger of oxidation. On the other hand, if you give somebody a drug that manipulates the nitric oxide, you have the potential because you're taking some of the body's decision-making out of it to create too much. So that could happen in a drug state, but not using an amino acid. So we now know that arginine is the master amino that nitric oxide synthase cleaves the nitric oxide off of, and then the leftover arginine without nitric oxide becomes citrulline. And so what else does it do and what helps it? So the first thing, as I mentioned, is nitric oxide can be raised either with arginine or citrulline, both amino acid structures for different reasons. The next thing I mentioned, cofactors. Primary cofactor is zinc, and then magnesium is also generally found nearby or helping nitric oxide do its work. So zinc and magnesium are generally used along with arginine to help the function of nitric oxide. What kind of medical or healthcare uses have I seen it used for? Well, in this case, when we're looking at nitric oxide, we're often looking at using arginine and zinc and magnesium to improve the flow and production of nitric oxide to help with the vascular and the nervous system. So I have used arginine and zinc and magnesium to help people, for example, to sleep better at night because their brain was a little bit too active and the nitric oxide function in the brain is calming. So that's one thing. The other is as a help. It's not a good primary treatment, but as a help for blood pressure problems, high blood pressure problems. It's also been used for vascular spastic problems such as angina. So chest pain due to lack of blood flow or vasospasm. So angina or chest pain that is related to blood flow can be treated. You might have heard of people using nitrates for chest pain, you know, such as nitroglycerin or something like that. Nitrates for chest pain basically go in and trigger the same thing that nitric oxide does, so it takes the chest pain away. In people with chronic vasospastic angina, when every other cause has been ruled out and they don't want to use the drug nitrates all the time, they keep them for emergencies, a lot of times we will use arginine, zinc, and magnesium together, and that will help them decrease the, the frequency of the vasospastic chest pain that they have. Now, obviously that's something you must work with your doctor on and make sure that you have the appropriate other medications in case it gets worse, etc. But that's another reason or way that we have used it. Now, when we get to the point of safety, which is always very important when you think about healthcare things, is arginine safe for the body? Well, arginine is an amino acid that the body is very well aware of, and it's very aware of what to do with this amino acid. So it's very safe. The other thing, like I said, is as opposed to a drug type therapy, when you're giving arginine as just a supplement amino acid, the body decides how much of that arginine it's going to use for nitric oxide production and how much it's not going to use for nitric oxide production. So there is a distinction that is made for that purpose. And so the arginine kind of has the body giving it sort of a built-in safety margin with its use. Zinc and magnesium are both very safe as well. One thing with zinc, if you're taking that, it can cause a lot of stomach upset. The stomach lining does not like zinc very much. So we usually have people eat half of a meal and then take their zinc and then eat the other half of a meal and then they're usually okay. If they take it before the meal and it gets stuck to the stomach lining, you can get nauseated or even vomit from zinc. So there's not a lot of danger with zinc except for the irritation to the stomach lining. Now, zinc does also go with copper. So usually in supplements that have zinc, there'll be a little bit of copper with it if you're using it long term. Magnesium, the biggest side effect with magnesium, if you get too much, would be loose stools or diarrhea because it's an osmotic agent that can cause loose stools. But generally speaking, again, the doses are kept lower with most people. So the arginine doses can be on the low end, 250 to 500 milligrams, or on the higher end, 1,000 
thousand to three thousand milligrams with people. It just depends a lot on the need and the response of the person. Some people are responsive to very little amounts, and some are responsive to very big amounts. If it's going to be used for something like I say with uh, angina chest pain or your blood pressure or other things like that, you do want to work with a healthcare provider that knows how to monitor your blood pressure and all of those things. Otherwise, these things are incredibly safe because your body's already used to using them. So arginine and nitric oxide, we want to remember big picture, arginine is the donor for nitric oxide with the help of nitric oxide synthase or NOS enzyme. And out of the NOS enzyme and arginine coming together, we get nitric oxide and citrulline, another amino. That's the leftover amino. And then that nitric oxide has many things it does, but the two big ones are neurological activity or neuroactive and then vascular activity or relaxing the blood vessels, helping with blood flow, helping with peripheral blood flow, etc. All right. I hope that answered the question. That's what we do on this channel. I'm Dr. A, and we're going to put up some other videos that you can watch here. I want to ask everyone, if you have not joined the channel and subscribe, please do subscribe, like, and share comment, do all the good stuff. And we keep putting these out and we put a lot of them out based on your questions that you write in. So thanks again to the community that's been growing. I'll see you guys all on the next video.